Hi guys, I'm Anastasia and today we'll boost your vocabulary. We posted English conversation starters for beginners last week and now you are ready to learn some advanced phrases that you can use in a conversation. I've picked 25 most useful expressions for you, so let's get started. But before we begin, don't forget to subscribe to our channel so that you don't miss any of our English lessons. Everything's in English. All you need to know. All right, how did you learn to speak English? When you meet an old friend or a colleague to discuss everything that's happened to you since the last time you saw each other, it's called to catch up with someone on something. For example, I ran into Linda in the mall yesterday and we spent hours catching up on our lives. There's so much to catch up on. Another useful expression here is to be out of touch. It means to lose connection with someone or um, not to be speaking in a while. For example, somebody asks you, oh, how's Mike? And you say, I don't know. We've been out of touch. We fell out of touch after the whole Robert mess. If instead of a long catch up, you prefer just a short chat to talk about the latest news with somebody, use the expression to touch base. For example, I'll stop by his place and touch base with him when I'm in the city next time. I was just calling to touch base. This expression can also be used when you want somebody's opinion on something or when you're asking somebody to meet up, you're suggesting, or oh, instead of let's meet up, you can say let's touch base. If you start talking about one subject but then the conversation goes in another direction, it's called to go off topic. I was trying to get her opinion about my new haircut but she went completely off topic. We've gotten a little off topic. If you did go off topic in a conversation, so you can get back to the original subject and that would be called to get back on track. So you can say, let's get back on track now. Um, can we get back on track here? You can also use this expression if, for example, you decided to stop eating sweets, but then you had some fun and enjoyed yourself and had chocolate. And you can say, okay, let's get back on track and start eating healthily again. Another cool expression here, to be in the loop and the opposite, to be out of the loop. So to be in the loop means to be constantly updated on a subject, to stay informed or to know what's going on with a project. Uh, I'd love to be in the loop, David. And then when you stop getting updated on something, you can say that you're out of the loop. I'm back from my holiday and I feel completely out of the loop. It means I have no idea what's going on. We've both been out of the loop. If you're enjoying these advanced expressions, you'll definitely like our online course from intermediate to advanced in 30 days. It covers everything from grammar and vocabulary to writing and speaking skills. Each lesson is short and comprehensive, making this course suitable for students even with busy schedules. Check the full curriculum and the next starting date via the link that I'm gonna leave in the description box. When trying to introduce a new topic in a conversation, you are bringing it up. So to bring something up means to mention it or to start talking about something. For example, she's always bringing up her fancy job. Don't bring up Jimmy Carter, gardeners. There's another good expression that we use to interrupt a conversation, to jump in. So you can say, jump in or jump into a conversation. I'd like to jump into this conversation and remind you that we're running late. And jump in with another question. If you need to interrupt a conversation that's been going on for a while, you can ask the person to hold that thought. So for example, two people are talking about a subject, but you really need to ask one of them a question. So you can say, please hold that thought and then address the person. It means to pause for a second the flow of the conversation and then get right back to where you stop the person. Oh my God. When you're trying to explain something difficult or complex to somebody, use the expression to get something across to help people understand what you want to say. For example, I had a better idea and needed to find a way to get it across to my boss. 
I couldn't even get my point across. If you do succeed in making others understand your point, you can use the expression to get something through. I know the verb to get has lots of meanings, but now you, you have a better feeling of the language, you can understand how to use it in all sorts of situations. So in a conversation, if you managed to get your idea across, you can also say, I managed to get it through. After hours of meetings, she finally got her project idea through to the president. Maybe I can get through to him. If you go even further in the conversation and you want to persuade the others as well to share your point of view, you can say to talk somebody around. It means to convince someone. For example, we will talk the creditors around giving us more time. We will convince them to give us more time. When you change your mind or you want to introduce a counter argument, you can say, hmm, on second thoughts, as if you started thinking you had an initial idea and then you thought again for the second time and you can say, hmm, on second thoughts, that plan maybe isn't that bad. On second thoughts, I'm gonna go. If you want not to only communicate your ideas to others, but also listen to their opinion or get some advice, you can use the expression to talk something over. Let me talk this breakup over with you. Or if you're sitting down with somebody to get into the detail of something, you can say, okay, let's talk this over. I should talk this over with my wife. Supporting somebody else's opinion in a conversation is also called to back something up. It means you can prove that your opinion or somebody else's is true. For example, the scientists back up their vaccine with trial numbers. Betty, back me up here. If you want to introduce an argument or an example, you can use a phrase off the top of my head. It means something that you just thought of or was the first thing that came to mind. Okay, off the top of my head, Donna Janet. To summarize the argument or to draw the speech or the conversation to a conclusion, you can use the phrase at the end of the day. It's a very common expression. You can say, well, at the end of the day, we all make mistakes. At the end of the day, it's for the best. When you understand something difficult or complex that somebody else explains to you, it means you get your head or your mind around something. After this lecture, I finally got my mind around this equation. I'm still trying to wrap my mind around it. If you're about to share a secret with somebody, you're about to let on. For example, she knows more that she's letting on. We can't let on that anything's wrong. And if you tell somebody a secret by mistake, you can say you blurted it out. So I'll just let Fry blurt it out thoughtlessly. When there is not much left to discuss, you can say that the conversation is about to dry up. For example, yesterday I went on a blind date and the conversation dried up in a few minutes. However, if the conversation was going on and you had quite a lot to say, but they didn't let you, it means you were shut down. Why don't you ever shut her down? And if there is a person who keeps going on and on about something and you may feel irritated and tired of them, you can say you're sick of something or you're sick of someone. I'm sick of it, Jim. I'm sick of this place. And the last expression is really relevant to 2020, especially when we have to work or study from home and have lots of video calls. The expression is to freeze. This is what happens if you or your colleague or your friend lost the internet connection and the picture is not moving on the screen. My screen is frozen! I hope you enjoyed our vocabulary lesson today. Uh, please let us know in the comment sections below which expressions you found most useful. Please look for more opportunities to use these expressions in real life conversations. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you next week in another useful lesson.